Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcast. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom podcast. Today, we continue our comic book movie journey through film with Spider Man 3, released on May 4th, 2007. Uh, It was uh, written by Sam Raimi, along with his brother Ivan Raimi, uh, and Alvin Sargent, and directed by Sam Raimi. I'm Colton Roberts, and I'm joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. We are also joined once more to conclude the trilogy by Michael Muehlberger. What's up, homie? What's up, brother? It's good to be back. Finale. Oh, Oh, yeah, man. It is good to have you. This is your, uh, oh fuck yeah fourth time fourth time with us you know you did yeah, batman yeah. forever never batman done forever ever and here i am doing four in one year who, who am I? what's going on it's crazy yeah, fuck yeah i love it i love it uh but no it's a good movie it's a good movie you know uh and i mean uh, there's an argument to be had there um i've been back and forth on this for years um Oh, it's a good movie. Oh, it's a bad movie. Oh, I like it. No, I don't really like it. Uh, and I, it, it's interesting where I'm sitting today, Mike. Where are you sitting after this viewing of Spider-Man 3? So it's it's been a while since I've seen like all three of these movies kind of like in the same time period. It's been a while. And so I've always I've kind of been curious since we started this journey, like which one's going to be my favorite? And I found it. Oh, it's no the, kidding. Out of the Number three. Whole three, I think this is the most and the one I've enjoyed, my most enjoyable watch for sure. So it, I will not sell it short. I have a fun fucking time watching this movie. You know, like it is, it is a grand old time with some Raimi ass villains, and that makes it a lot of fun. But Joe, how are you feeling after after this viewing of Spider Man three? I you know I just I had more of a fun time for like realizing. That this movie in particular is where all the Spider-Man memes come from. Like, almost <laughs> all of them. Like, there's there's pizza time, you know, and that's pizza Spider-Man time. too. You know, we have, like, a couple, but, like, oh, my God, this one was just, like, every single... You know, you, you have, like, the videos of just Tobey Maguire in public. Like, he has that Spidey sense if a camera's on him, and you... Bum, 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 bum! You hear that music, yeah. you know, it's this one that's played all the time in this movie. I love it. Like, the... the uh... Oh, like, oh, my God. There what it was like a line that i oh it's two lines that he says and it's out of nowhere and oh my god i'm pissed i had it right at the tip of my tongue i love the one where he uh my line of the movie is whenever uh his landlord is like giving him a rough like having fun with him giving the giving him a little bit of a rough time you know he's like they have this rapport it's something they do he doesn't really expect peter to pay rent but he's gonna give him shit because he's the landlord and he's like yeah come on give me give me your rent give me your rent you got rent i need the rent and uh peter (laughs) you'll get your rent when you fix this damn door uh that's uh (laughs) that's my line but like more so because of the way it affects the landlord and his daughter immediately after like Like, they were like oh shit and he's like he is a good boy he he must be going through something you know like it's just like ah that's sweet you know it's uh it's weird i I love that moment though you'll get your rent when you fix this damn door yes that's i don't know a lot of problems with that door you know it just opens very harshly and then like when it may comes over both the doorknobs come off of it you know it's like just not his apartment's not in the best in the best condition but and she makes a comment on it which i I thought was funny too she's like you see you haven't done much with the space well, I guess you really can, anyways. Yeah. yeah no, man. I uh, it <laughs> I don't know. I love. I I I found myself. I I've, it's always like a one-on-one-off viewing for me, where I'll 
watch it. I'll really like it. And then I'll watch it again. And I'll go, ah, I don't, and this, we're on the one on viewing. I, I had a great time with this one. I do think it has some structural issues. And I think the back half is a little, I, there's, there's a section of this movie that I could take or leave, but I think the beginning is really strong. And the end, like the very end is a much better conclusion to this trilogy than I ever really remembered. Um, like it felt very, very full circle for him and Harry. It felt very full circle for her, for him and Mary Jane. And obviously him forgiving Flynn Marco and kind of accepting the circumstances mm-hmm. of uncle Ben's passing. And like, it's just, it was very fulfilling for Peter as a character, I think. And that's more than anything. What I enjoyed out of this viewing was kind of realizing like, Oh, I've never viewed it as like a proper ending to his movies. Yeah. And this time I actually did. I was like, Oh wait, you know, like I would have liked a Spider-Man four, but I, I actually don't think you need it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it does do a good job of concluding the story, which I've never felt that way. Um, I think it's and that sort MJ. of clarity is nice to have. MJ is just the one thing in this that I can't, I don't know, like, it just, or just the relationship in general, like how it was like, hand, like, like, I guess they're trying to show that he's like, He's getting really, really big in the city as obviously he's Spider-Man, you know, but obviously still dirt poor. Doesn't matter. You know, he's masked up. But, like, everyone loves Spider-Man. And, like, you know, mm-hmm. MJ's – her career's not going too well, you know, and, and she doesn't really want to tell him, like, hey, I got kicked out of the show, everything like that. But, like, the straight-up kiss on stage, like, I just find that that's just, like – he wasn't even wearing this, the the symbiote suit. You know, that was just all Peter there. You know, and like, yeah. I don't know. I, that, he's that just getting a little. He's getting a little big headed because yeah. of the fame. You know, he's like, like uh, I don't know. Well, does, do you think he really does that though? You know, like, I mean, no. he like just told MJ, like, "Hey, I'm coming in from over there. Watch." Like, he knows she's right fucking there. You know, the whole time, and like, he's about to propose as well. He's like, "Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure about this. I'm like, I've never been more sure. I'm locking. I'm, I'm dropping the question. Let me just kiss." You know, this, my lab partner that I'm with every week and that I study with and, you know, and, and all this other shit. Let me just kiss her on stage, you know, and give her the, the kiss too that they had. And she, she even says it. She's like, that was our kiss. What? Like, you obviously knew I was watching that. You obviously knew I'd be there. And I'm like, yeah, kind of true. And like, I guess they needed some conflict there with like the relationship instead of it just being all good and all happy or whatever. But I guess like. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I thought it just could have been like he had to answer the calls and she was getting tired of like just not having anybody, you know, not like one thing that happened that like actually caused like tension, you know, I just but mm. um but yeah, I know no, other Mike. too cuz I don't know. I just, I was watching this and I got confused about that part, Joe. I'd like rewind. I'm like, "Wait, he just kissed another girl and wasn't he just like said he was in love?" I was so confused. I had to rewind and make sure I wasn't tripping. But another like conflict, I feel like Mary Jane's kind of a little bit of a player. She kind of keeps going back and forth between Harry and Peter, you know? Like, even yeah. when they were friends and even when they're enemies, she still just kind of, like, you know, bounces back side to side. Like, she went over to his place because she needed company. And I feel like she kind of knew what was, like, what might happen if she did that. And she did it. And it's like, she felt bad that, that was, it happened. But. This was a priority for me and coming into this movie was trying to understand Mary Jane's perspective in it all. So like, I, like Mm -hmm. I remembered that being something I've had uh, prior issues with, but I come from this a little bit more, except uh, a little bit more accepting of her and her circumstances within this movie, because more than ever, I understand exactly where she's coming from whenever, like aside from the, uh, you know, he has to answer the call and he's always busy and he's not there for me. But like the, whenever she goes like, I got some news and he's like, you can't listen to them. You gotta, you gotta keep going forward. You gotta keep doing it. She's like, I don't need that right now. I appreciate exactly what you're trying to do, but that is not what I need to hear. And it's never what they need to hear. And you know, like it's, it's not, you know, it's just, you mm-hmm. just want to be heard. 
That's all. It's not, it's not time for you to come in and fix every issue. It's time for you to sit back and listen, Peter. That's all. You're just supposed to hear her out, let her complain. And whenever she's done, you go, I'm sorry, baby. That sucks. Is there anything yeah. I can do for you? And that's all yeah. you do. You don't. Yeah. He did kind of like at the same time was like, well, man, yeah, I'm the experiment's kind of blowing up right now. Like I'm like, I'm kind Dude. of an icon. Like the the kids yell Spider-Man, just Spider-Man. Lack of, yeah. Just a complete lack of awareness within the relationship. And that is, that yeah. is a lack of his attentiveness for MJ. You know, he expects that because he's doing good. She should also be doing good. He is completely oblivious to the idea that their relationship is not in a good place. Um, and And man, he even like bums it up, you know, and is about to propose. And MJ is like, finally, you know, I'm done, whatever. Can't, can't really do this anymore. And then, you know, like she even gives him a second chance. Like after hearing that, like he found out that, you know, the new, you know, uh, Flint's the new murderer, you know, or whatever. And he's out at large and, and everything. And then MJ's like, oh, my God, I heard what happened. Like, not about last night. Like, are you okay? You know, like, doing the per- the perfect thing for the relationship, you know. And then Peter's like, I don't need your fucking help. Like, I- and I guess, like, the symbiote could have been talking there. Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't know how much that plays a role, you know, in it. Like, when he takes the suit off, if he still, like, has the urges because he is the host or something like that, you know, sort of mm. thing. Because, like, this is, like, a di- – like, Venom, I don't know, like, it usually isn't a thing that you can just easily take off and, like, put in a chest and you have two suits, you know. It's, like, it's usually a very, you know, forced situation um, that you're under. So, like, I don't know, it is it is an interesting way that they handled it. And I don't know if it's, like, supposed to be viewed as it's touched him and it's been a part of him. So he's just, like, he's having these urges even without the suit on, but the suit just amplifies it even more or something like that, but... Yeah, I don't know. That was the the relation. He didn't make the best relationship decisions. Um, this movie, Toby didn't. Um, he had fun though. He had a lot of fun. Man, did he? Can't deny that. He enjoyed. I feel like he did not have a lot of stress. He was carefree. He just went with the flow, and he enjoyed life for like the first time in a decent while. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. There was like a. There's probably like a 20 minute montage of him just. Uh, yeah like there for a second fucking you know? shit up left yeah, and right walking down the street girls are getting uh, like that's the thing at first the girls are kind of looking at him and they're like ooh like look at look at this guy walking down the street but then whenever he starts to go into like his like pointing at all the girls they kind of like look at him as like a oh what a like what a dork like the second it, time i don't know but like the first girls that were looking at him were actually kind of into him and then it seemed that the more i don't know i guess he was kind of looking like a dork and that's funny. Yeah, like that's exactly how that would happen in real life too. If like you were to walk down a street and try to have swagger like that, they just be like, "You <laughs> doing?" Matt, he popped out of that store, just stood there and danced for like just twenty seconds. Dude, they started dancing and then walked and then kept dancing as he's walking. He hey, bro, good. you can dance in public. You absolutely can. There's mm-hmm. got to be music though. You know, like the, that, like the get on up is not actually playing That's where true. he's standing. You know, he's just getting out there and he's fucking, he's getting head. it. You know, yeah. like it, it especially, it, <laughs> I love I that the, that. the description of the symbiote here is like it amplifies the characteristics of the wearer, especially the negative stuff. Mm-hmm. So all it, I think it is that he has, just as most of us do have the urge to go uh like uh, you know and, and an example like where i am having a disagreement with my partner mm-hmm. obviously every once in a while there's something i could say that i know i could say that would just bring this shit to a different level you know it would it would make this shit worse but I have the wherewithal to go, I can't say that. I shouldn't say that. That's the wrong thing to say. So I will say something more constructive. When you wear the symbiote suit, that's the first thing you think to say or do. 
you know? So like that is what he is. Every single thing is the worst urge he has coming to the surface. Um, It's not necessarily that it's like, oh, it's taken him over and it's controlling his actions. I do think it's something that he he would think to do, but the good in him would go, well, you can't fucking do that, dude. You know, like, uh, but when the symbiote comes, it's like, it's that's raps. It's we're not playing that game. We're going to do every worst thing we could possibly do. And the more you let it feed your decisions, the more you give in to what it kind of makes you think to do so like whenever he's like oh let's go on a date Gwen let's do this shit let's go to the nightclub where MJ works apparently Peter's got the keys he can play the piano pretty nice um and he's like let's do this shit yeah I mean that like I don't know I mean a piece of shit move to do like that whole show just to like kind of make her jealous I guess you know and everything but like the piano was pretty sick like, oh, yeah. just got on there, and everyone was like, what the, like, well, who the fuck's playing that? And just, Spider Man. Little, little do they know, yeah, Spidey's just got, he was in the zone. He was in that, the flow state, almost, yeah. I don't know, like, he was just feeling it. But, yeah, no, that that was a, a douche move. Like, I don't know, and even Gwen noticed it, too. She was like, really? That was all for her, dude? Like, Right. I like Gwen a lot in this movie. I'd mm-hmm. considered her for my favorite character of the movie just because she's... I also love Bryce Dallas Howard, who's mm-hmm. playing Gwen Stacy. Um, She's... I mean, she's directed a few of my favorite episodes of The Mandalorian. She's in the Jurassic World franchise. Like, she's a uh, very, very prominent actress and uh, mm-hmm. creative in filmmaking. And just, like, mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever registered that Bryce Dallas Howard was Gwen Stacy. In this, this movie, until like I, I saw her name in the credits, and I went, yeah, yeah. "Oh, wait a fucking minute!" You know, I, I and uh, it was just kind of, yeah, like I don't kind of happened. Just a different, different look for her, and like I, I never noticed it until, like, yeah, you know, when a movie like has the credits at the beginning, it kind of feels more real. I don't know why. Mm. Like, this is about to be good, like better. Better movies have credits <laughs> at the beginning for some oh, reason. Yeah. yeah, like I, I don't know why. Maybe that's just a me thing. Um, if I see credits at the beginning, but I don't know that that was the name that stuck out, and I'm like, wait, no shit, like, wait, who does she play? And then I yeah. go go in, and I'm like, Gwen Stacy. I'm like, wait a minute, like I have not noticed that my whole life, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't know. My childhood, I like, I did have a crush just on on MJ. I, I don't know. Mm. That was just one of my childhood crushes. So I was probably just more focused. Well, on Well, you MJ. also, whenever you become like, whenever you become enamored with a hero, like, like Peter Parker, you want what Peter Parker has. And if you're, if you love what this Peter, if you love this Peter Parker, you want that MJ, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, that's kind of how these things go. But I actually did go with Kirsten Dunst as MJ for my performance mm-hmm. of this movie. Okay. I wanted to give her some love. I think she had, she got, shit shoveled her way for three fucking movies and she did the most she possibly could with it you know what i'm saying and uh i wanted to go ahead and give her some love for the last movie here because she does have some she does have some really good moments you know i think she's funny enough i think she's the most relatable character within this movie as far as the the conflict and the turmoil she faces um but she always proves that you know she's a real one but she needs she needs that reciprocated. And if it's not reciprocated, it's like, well, then what am I even here for? And that's, mm. it's kind of something we can, I, I feel we, most yeah. of us can relate to. Um, I read the best piece of trivia. Thankfully, she didn't have to scream in this movie because she screamed enough in the previous <laughs> two that they just recycled her old. <laughs> um, because I, I remember, I, I thought Lorena trivia for two that like her voice was just shot. Like after a lot of, a lot of recordings just because she had to scream so much. Um, but she didn't have to this time. And, yeah, no, I, I almost went with her for a performance. Uh, she she was, was really close. Um, and, like, yeah, you're right. Like, I think she does have the most sort of relatable story there is. You know, it's not Spidey, you know, a superhero that's infected with the symbiote. You yeah, know? it's it's not, it's not anyone else's yeah, like, fault that he's the most relatable. Because my friend killed my dad, and then now I'm the new Green Goblin, and, yeah. like, that's super relatable. She's just dealing yeah, with most like, human problems yeah. in the movie. <laughs> Uh, oh, she's got she got fired from her big job, and now she has to go work again as like a, a waitress and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's a lot more obtainable uh, to get to wrap your head around. That's for sure. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, she like her herself. She's not like a bad part of the movie. It's just like how Toby handles the relationship, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's that is the point 
of everything. But, like, I don't know. It was just how confident he was talking and being like, yeah, I know she's the one. I'm going to marry her. And then, like, just doing all this stupid shit afterwards. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Well, you got the confidence. He's feeling like he can do no wrong. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of, like, because he, he... He feels like he can separate Spider-Man from himself whenever, you know, it comes to quiz, when it comes to kissing Gwen. But then when it comes to talking to MJ, he's protruding this confidence of, yeah, man, I'm Spider-Man. And now I have someone who knows I'm Spider-Man. So all I'm going to talk about with you is that I'm Spider-Man and how awesome that is and how wonderful of a time I'm having because you're the only person who knows. So you are going to hear it from me. All the time. Uh, True. And that would become a lot. That would become like, I get it, man. Shit. You're awesome. And I appreciate you for everything you do. But goddamn, shut the fuck up. Uh. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you wouldn't really have many victories against Spider-Man. You know, like no matter what, like if MJ like sold out Broadway, he could just be like, well, yeah, but I saved three kids on Broadway that almost got smashed by a car. Yeah, what you didn't know is that someone tried and, to drop a bomb on the yeah, building you were no, working in. No, I saved in, your and show. And I into yeah, the sky. It's like, yeah, it's like you can never really have a win against Spider-Man. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel MJ now. It's like, I don't know. That, that'd be a stressful relationship there. Especially when you're the only one who knows it, you know? Yeah. Like whenever uh, whenever Harry's lost his memory and he comes to the celebration and she's, he's like, where's Peter? And she just kind of like looks around and she goes, I don't know, probably taking a picture somewhere. You know, like she's not trained for that. You know, Peter's the one who's mm-hmm. been like, oh, well, I've got to be careful about the shit yeah. I do. But MJ is just kind of thrust into this situation and it's like, good luck, MJ. We love you, but shit. Um, yeah. Not like a. She's a. I think she's a. A, a good part of this movie. That's just uh, you know. The the complicated stuff comes with Harry, you know, like the mm. the whole the whole stuff with Harry that Michael was talking about earlier. It's like well, that's that's not a. I mean, that's not exactly what you want. That's not what you want to do. You don't run off and kiss your boyfriend's best friend. That's not something you do. That's a bad look. Um, no matter how yeah, shitty you're uh, being treated, he forgot, you know, he, for he forgot, you know, he remembers all the 12th grade that he wrote a play in 12th grade and like, all. no, I mean, I guess it was just short term amnesia. He just, I guess he forgot the bro code, you know, just for that brief, brief moment there. Oh, he's, he is never abided by the bro code as we know. Yeah, that's uh, true. Spider-Man one, he that dated MJ yeah. knowing full well, Peter. Yeah, loved her. And he was like, sorry, he just never made a move, dude. Don't know what you want me to do about it. Jeez. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Surprisingly though, this movie, I kind of liked, I kind of liked his side of the story. Like more oh, yeah. than I ever have this, like this watch, I was like, okay, I think this is actually pretty cool. Cause I, every time I watched it before, I always kind of thought the amnesia thing was just kind of dumb, like a dumb way to get around, like him just like not wanting to kill him right away. Like, so it could just, I don't know, have some moment at the end. Like I always kind of just threw it off as like, oh, it's lazy writing or whatever. Like, it's just, it's weird. It doesn't really fit, but like, I think it's actually, it is just really cool. And it makes like his like sacrifice at the end, like much more worth it. Like in everything, like he, mm. he, like you see him like going absolute crazy and like talking to his dad, you know, right, right there. And he's like, you got to, you know, you got to avenge me. You got to finish what we started, you know, everything. And he's like, okay, it, was, it does seem pretty bad, you know, here. And they have like many altercations, like different kinds of altercations, like him in the hospital, like where the doctor's like, yeah, no, he's actually fine. He needs some rest. And then to- Toby's like, ah, maybe I should like wait. Like, I don't know if I should see him yet because like, if he remembers that I killed his dad and all, and if I don't know if he still wants to kill me, but then he goes in there and he's like, you know, he, he just sees him smile and then they like, they're friends again for like this little moment. Yeah. It's like, it's weird. He doesn't like, and he doesn't know, but like, he like, he's like, oh, everything's okay. Like we can be friends again and everything's back to normal. And then, you know, switch all switch back up whenever he's remembering everything and then going crazy and getting MJ and teaming up with, I don't know. Like I thought it was actually, I thought it gave a lot of really cool conflict for the movie. Mm. Um, and I, that's, I, I ended up going with him as the character for the movie. Um, just cause I thought he spiced like oh, yeah. I, just on, on this watch. Like he just, I don't know. He actually just spiced up a lot of the movie and kept it kind of interesting. And, um, even though he did some some dickish moves for sure and didn't you know abide by the bro code um well it was pretty funny whenever he had forgotten everything 
just how like genuinely good of a dude he is. Like it's kind of like mm-hmm. a the the circumstances of the last few years have kind of slanted Harry in a direction where he's kind of become irredeemable, so you think. Um, mm-hmm. But he's reverted to this brain of, like, just graduated high school, and he's he's got hope, and he loves the people he, he loves, and he's like, hey, man, we living good. You're my best friend, and you're my best friend's girl, but I also, I'm also in love with you, so we'll see about that. Um, mm-hmm. Uh. Nah, man. I think he's a, I think he's a great part of this movie. And he actually like the, the moment whenever they're fighting at the end and his like pumpkin bomb lands in Sandman and they like zoom in on it. I'm like, fuck yeah, yeah, man. You know, like I am so hyped for that. Uh, but uh, Mike, what about you? What's your favorite character of this movie? Oh, uh, favorite character obviously is the symbiote Spider Man slash Peter. I don't know how to like, Categorize that ah. as characters, but I'm putting them as one. And what should what we could give him a name like He's, like something Peter, like something Peter, like bad, like, but not bad Peter. That's too easy. Goth you know? Peter, like he goth. goth. Yeah, he was kind of goth. Yeah, he's, he's on the phase. I don't know, dude. He just he kicked ass in fights. He kicked Harry's ass like two or three times. I feel like he made his neighbor, his sweet neighbor, make him cookies. And get a milk. Oh my God, that was nuts, like, dude. Yeah, the amount of cookies and everything that he requested cold. there. He was about yeah. to, he was about to fuck his secretary of the office that he works at. That, man, he did go crazy. Holy he shit! Was, he, took, he took Gwen on a date. Like, dude, he just like he he was just nailing. He could like not miss at all, and he was oh just, shit, so confident thing, bro. Oh, I love that. That's why he became the way he did when this, because he was so confident, he felt like he could do no wrong. So when he put the symbiote suit on, it amplified his fucking confidence. And that's uh, all that was coming through there is like he could do absolutely nothing wrong. And that's what he was feeling there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, he, he was, con- I mean, he was majorly just, confident. Yeah, that yeah. swag. Loved it. He was. I forgot about that, like going up to the secretary, going like he was just Literally, going up to he, anyone. Yeah, even he, went up to the, the Parker. Host, that he took Quinn out. He went to the host of the restaurant. He went on a date and like was like whispering, glitter like a twenty or hot, hot legs. legs. Yeah, like, yeah. hot legs. Yeah. Literally, he was just every single. <laughs> that might be the line. I don't know. I, I kind of forgot about that. That was pretty funny. Um yeah, but dark, I, dark Peter. I don't know. I was trying to think. I, I thought I had, I thought I had something in my head when I was going there. Like, dark Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey, I mean the the shot of it like going all over him, and then like he just blacked out, and then wakes up in front of the window. That was, oh. that was pretty sick. And, like that. Oh, this feels. I, I, I don't know. Like I in the poster. This is something else. That's one of the memes. That's uh, that's my line. I think that's my line. Is like. I had either like a really nice Aunt May line, wherever Aunt May comes over after like you know the the proposal goes shit, and he's like, "I screwed up, Aunt May." You know, Aunt May's just like, "You'll start by doing the hardest thing. You'll forgive yourself. I believe in you, Peter. You're a good person, and I know you'll find a way to put it right in time." Such you know, Aunt May, just a real one. You know, keeping it real. And then my other line is that yeah, he gets the symbiote and he takes off his mask and just. You know, he's feeling great. And that, what comes to his head as confident, badass, you know, usually like Venom, you get like just, I don't know, and it, like some, I don't know, something just crazy. This is something else. Like in the It'd most like hilarious voice too. Like he says it like, this, this is something, something else. else. Uh, yeah, like, it uh, would have been hilarious if he was like, <laughs> this fucks, you know, like, uh, if- <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I get like, I guess it amplifies. You're, it just amplifies him, and he is just a, an absolute nerd, you know? That dude's just a dork, you know? It's not like a geek. So, like, it's... I guess it doesn't make you innately bad, I guess, you know? It's just the intrusive thoughts win more often, mm. I guess, you know, maybe? Um, but, yeah, no, I loved I loved that. This is something else. It's just, like... But, but I think that is my shot, though, of him actually coming out, like, upside down, looking at the reflection, and then, like... Mm. The, 
camera turns as he turns and like he sticks on the wall. He's checking himself out. I'm like, yeah, no, this is this yeah, that is was hard. Sick. That was hard. That was that was my original shot. I was like, this is the like the bat most badass thing you can see. He had his new suit, he had like those silver like mm. almost literally glittery eyes that were just like staring mm. at the camera. So cool. But then later on through the movie. I saw this shot and I was just, I could not stop laughing. I know, cause I'd never seen this before. And it was when Jay, they were in Jay, Jonah James's like office. And it was back when Peter had what like, you talking about? He, took out, he took down Eddie and then got his pictures in. So he just like was new boss man. And same thing with the confidence. He's like, yeah, give me, I'll take this position, but double the pay. And he just walks into his office, sits down in his chair and just looks at him feet on the desk and J. Jonah Jameson for the first time ever is just baffled. He's speechless. He has no comeback at all. He just is looking at him and just like nothing. And that's never happened. He's always so quick with comebacks and anything going on. He's right there. But this was that one point in time where he just did not know what to do. So that was my shot of the movie right there. His little frustrated, confused face. That I mean I, I thought I thought you were gonna talk about whenever um, it's before he like reveals Eddie Brock is like had the fake and he like Eddie Brock hung the the thing up on the wall and then it cuts to like the reflection of like dark like dark dark Pete, Peter just back there like in in the in the back you know just like staring at him like oh I'm about to get your ass you know like he just I'm gonna put just, some like, dirt in your eye at it. yeah <laughs> yeah what what a line that yeah dude how many man I don't know his his lines were just too good like he Toby just can't really. I don't know. Do you think he's like trying to play like this, like dorky version of a bad guy, you know, and kind of like letting his bad side out? Or do you think like this is like Toby's? Like- Absolutely. I think that's what's happening. Um, okay. because he's played some pretty sadistic kind of fucked up roles. Uh, Babylon, he has a small role in that and he's like scary in it. And you're like, Oh, this guy is fucking freaky. Okay. Um, I do, I do think that's the case. Like, he is being a dick the way Peter Parker would be a dick. Like, if Peter Parker, with his brain, decided to be an asshole, this is what Peter Parker would be like. And, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking funny to watch. What I love, and my favorite character of the movie, which I'm going with more as like a, a joke here, because like, I love that 70s show, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going toe for grace as Eddie Brock for my character in this movie. Um, he is so fucking funny, dude. Yeah. I have no idea how he booked this. I have no fucking clue how he booked I think this. I was, I was reading this in the trivia that he was just invited to something that he didn't even know what it was. And he didn't even know he was auditioning for the movie, I guess. Like in the trivia, like there was something like he was invited to a thing where he didn't even know it was the audition, um, at all. I think that's so strange. I have no idea how he booked this. I love that he did. I think it's resulted in something extremely funny that I think is hysterical to watch. Um, one of my favorite scenes in this movie, uh, and I was tempted to go with it for my favorite scene and favorite shot. Like it's, it's a well photographed moment, but, uh, whenever he goes to the church and he's like, Hey God, it's Mr. Brock, Eddie, Eddie Brock. Um, I just want one thing from you. Kill Peter Parker. Bro doesn't even know he's Spider Man. He's not Venom yet. He's mm. just he's just fucked up his life to the point where he's like, I wish Peter Parker was dead, man. Uh, Praying that's to God all. To going to church and being like, God, please, one thing that I can I strike him down. I have one wish, like just one thing that I need in my life. Just kill Spider Man. Then boom, hand delivered. You know, like. God was like, here you fucking go, death. dude. Like, I mean, it'll eventually lead him to his own death, which was stupid as hell. You know, like, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, he, like, it, you know that that's an explosive right there. Like, did he think the symbiote was going to, like, save him? Or, like, was he just like, this is all I have left. I must die with the symbiote if it dies too? Like, I was like, I, okay, dude. I got, like, too much pleasure from that suit. Like, because he thought his previous life was just ruined and he couldn't do anything with that. So, this kind of gave him like a refresher, and so he did not want to lose his feeling and power, whatever yeah. he felt. Yeah. So that was like probably why he dove after that thing. Yeah, yeah he just was- had nothing left to lose at that point, you know. And 
if I, I, I do think he, I don't think he was thinking, you know, he was just like, no, this, the, yeah. my fucking buddy that's controlling my thoughts. Ooh, I love you. I'll die with you, bruh. Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's goofy as hell. Uh, everything about that dude is fucking hilarious. Uh, just from the, you know, what I understand about photography, you know, it's not just capturing the moment, you know, it's lighting, it's composition. It's, you know, like that, that whole thing, whenever he's being a complete photography dork. Um, I've also had this dream to work for J. Jonah Jameson, you know, one of the best, um, editors of our time or whatever. He was just playing him up and like, he, I don't know, Jameson was kind of like, hey, like, listen to this kid. Like, hey, he's, yeah. he's kind of, he, he's got something about him. I don't know what it is, but I like him. Um, but yeah, he was, I don't know. I, I, I always just think of him as like, just the most absolute, either wrong place, wrong time, or right place, right time. You know, for him, like, he was just, he hated Peter and Spider Man. Like, I don't know. I guess he didn't really hate Spider-Man. Spider-Man just broke one of his cameras, so he's like probably, you know, a little bit of hate towards him. But he's like, I don't know, I just, he wants him dead, and boom, immediately, just, just walks up the belt. Like, the symbiote comes to him, too. He doesn't even have to walk up there to, like, actually check out what's going on. He sees Peter from, like, 40 feet up, and he's like, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Like, oh, wow, what a revelation. Oh, now I'm fucking ripped, and I can swing across the city, and I want to eat people. You know, like, we didn't get to see any of that. I really wish we got to see him kind of go a little crazy a mm. little bit at first. But, but no, Ed, Eddie Brock is, um, I don't know, I think I like, uh, like, Hardy's Eddie Brock more. Like, the, the, yeah. Um, which Hardy is it? Because I um, always say the WWE, like, Jeff Hardy and, like, Matt, Matt Hardy. Hardy. It's Yeah, Tom. like, I always think it's Tom. Okay, yeah, Tom Hardy. No, I, I like... I like his his venom a little bit more. Um, I think this- that venom is better in almost every single way, which is kind of why I'm like, a, except for like I, I don't mind the villains becoming antiheroes sort of thing. That's currently the biggest fucking fad in comic book movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so like that's part of why I chose this Eddie Brock is that I love this dude was dedicated to to villainy. He was like. I want this motherfucker dead. I will see, I will do anything I can to see that through, you know? And that's, that, that, that literally was his only goal. Like he had nothing else. He was like, he went straight to Sandman is like, you want him dead. I want him dead. Let's work together, dude. Like just straight up. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't have a single other goal in mind. Nope. That's nuts. Yeah. It's good when villains are like that, you know, no, no, no galaxy ending scenario that like you just it, you need to take them out because obviously you need to save the galaxy or whatever just an, another menace you know like another menace that just wants you dead that's that's, that's all. classic you know yeah that's i don't know green goblin that's another yeah another dude that was just dedicated to the cause he just that's all he knew and he wanted to he was spreading like villainy like religion almost i don't know that's like that was like his goal he was like so evil that he wanted to spread it to spider-man and everyone in the city but yeah i know this i think like the villains in this were were pretty cool like they i a lot of the trivia is that they wanted to do another movie and this was thought of as like a part one part two situation they were thinking about going all the way up to six Mm spider-man six with toby which is kind of nuts um movie in the plans but apparently, they'd even like they developed like a costume for the vulture and everything that never got to never got to see the light of day. Uh, we saw for we saw Bruce Campbell in another role um, as the, uh, the French. Uh, yeah, he's the at the hostess. the French waiter, yeah. or uh, he's supposed yeah. to be Mysterio. Um, oh, he's uh, supposed to like in the fourth movie. It was going to be like. I've been there your whole life, yeah. you know, like yeah. uh, that that sort of thing, just kind of manipulating him along the way. <laughs> um, because like uh, in every situation, he's happened to make his circumstances a little bit worse. Okay, yeah, he um, didn't let him in the play because it was too late, you know, and everything. He made it, he made him uh, late to the to the dinner in this movie, um, by holding him holding him up there at the at the front, and then. Trying to kill the, t- like, he kind of, this was the one where he kind of did the least to make things worse. You know, he actually seemed More like he was trying to help. embarrassing for, like, Peter himself. 
mm-hmm. you know, like of of like calling out the like the ring twice, you know, and having him think it's about to happen, and Toby's like, no, 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 you know, or whatever. But like, yeah. I don't know, it was just more embarrassing. Yeah, it was more psychological. He's kind of fucking with him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think yeah. that's hilarious. And I love Bruce Campbell. And uh, since uh, you know, I think since we discussed Spider Man two. I've gotten a chance to get around to the Evil Dead movies from Sam Raimi, um, which, I mean, the dude's a, a, I think he's a brilliant filmmaker and just that he has such a distinct style and he executes on it as much as he can. And to see him with the amplified budget that Spider-Man grants him, uh, it was, it's fucking outstanding. Like the, the scenes where Harry and Peter are like, they're in their first fight and they're flying around the city in the the narrow alleys and you see it just like speeding by them and it zoomed in on their faces. And then later on, whenever Sandman and Spider-Man are fighting and he's about to open up the, uh, the water valve that'll muddy, muddify Sandman. And it like one nail pops and it like, it like zooms in on him and tilts every single time on Sandman. Uh, that's such a Raimi ass thing to do that. Like, it's just, uh, he's got a great style and I think it's, uh, it benefits this entire movie. Um, mm-hmm. cause my favorite shot is actually towards the beginning. I think the beginning of this movie is very visually fulfilling and I, I think it kind of loses it as the film goes on because it actually seems like the further into this movie, the more studio mandated the script kind of felt because they're trying, they tried to wrap it up and they planned for more, but then they were like, well, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, but, uh, the shot of him and MJ land on the giant spider web at the beginning, uh, that was nice. thought that shit was fucking gorgeous. Like underneath them, like the yeah. moonlight j- coming through, they're silhouetted. It was gorgeous, man. It was a pretty yeah, shot. In there, yeah, no, that was that was pretty clean, and just hope no one like walks up to them, you know, because like they found a pretty secluded spot in the woods. I was so high last night when I started this movie. I was so baked when I was watching this movie that I like forgotten whether or not she knew he was Spider Man while they were laying on the web. I was like, "How's he getting away with this?" And then I was like, "Oh yeah." Like maybe like he, he's still spinning the photographer. I'm I'm his photographer. You know he does that. Yeah. He does favors for me. He put yeah. up this web for us, MJ. Let's go lay on it. No, but then like it was like a half second thought, and then I was like, oh wait, yeah, no, they they already got this shit figured out. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, if they did like a Superman forget kiss, you know, God. yeah, forget and just she well, and no like idea. that's another thing that I love about the Raimi Spider Man movies is they're they're so clearly influenced by the Superman movies of old, like they're overwhelmingly so and i feel like uh thank god we had a creative like Raimi behind it or else we would have found ourselves with scenarios like that where they decide to go oh well we got to find a way for mj to for she would have got bonked on the head and lost her short-term memory you know what i'm saying like that's some shit they that that the superman writers would have done for for her here but uh I'm, i'm i'm so glad that's one thing that i'll always be appreciative for in this movie compared to other superhero movies is that she learns it. It's a fulfilling moment when she does learn it and they don't do anything to try to make her forget, you know, like just, that's just that. And I like that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, Mike, what, uh, what, who do you have for your favorite? Uh, let's see. You were, you did favorite character, right? Yes. Favorite performance. What's your favorite yeah. performance in this movie? Jump on whenever you were talking about, uh, Eddie, because you, yeah. you admit that, you know, got a little bit of a bias because that 70s show and I had that same exact feeling. Um, but also with that, I just thought that he played his character extremely well. Like what they were wanting from his character, I think he nailed it. Like like you were saying, Cole, like he was a little nerdy photographer. Like he was like really into it and about like you said, like the lighting. Like he said like these different mm-hmm. things about how mm-hmm. pictures should be. And then he also, but he wasn't like, too extremely nerdy wherever he turned into like the bad the villain guy like he was like okay like he could do that part too and he had that little revenge revenge story and he like actually like got into that very well and so that's why he got my performance is just i thought he just kind of nailed both extremes of being that nerdy photographer but then also could back up being the villain and i also mm-hmm. thought 
the same tendencies as Toby Maguire too, just like that little nerdy like mm-hmm. performance that they can do. I don't know. I feel like they can just both play that part very well. And so I saw a yeah, lot they of presented, they presented him as like the anti Peter, which was kind of cool, you know. That's, and I, like that worked out so well for me. That's why like coming back, like this is my favorite movie out of three because it's just like like you said, anti Peter with the when he gets a symbi- symbiote suit. It's just like. Dude, it made too much sense. It worked out too well. So, mm. well, and to go back to what Joe was saying earlier about the uh, him diving into the symbiote when the bomb was going, and why that's kind of a dumb decision. It it kind of shows the the dichotomy between Eddie Brock and Peter Parker, where Peter gained the wherewithal while still having the symbiote suit on to go. I need this shit off of me. It is not doing anything good. You know, mm-hmm. like this needs to go. Whereas Eddie. He has the suit off and he can't do anything but think about why he doesn't have it on anymore. You know, like it, it, it's just kind of a cool little two sides of the same coin sort of deal where Eddie Brock's like almost what Peter could have been if he was like a spoiled fucking brat. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, Granted, yeah. you know, he was going from like Peter was going from already Spider-Man with superhuman strength and could fly, you know, around the city to just a little bit stronger and I guess just a little different, you know, hormone change. Uh, but then Eddie went from full, just nothing, normal no dude. job fired normal dude to actually doing all that shit and having power. So like Eddie had a lot more to lose than Peter did. You know, Peter was like, well, I'll still be Spider-Man if I don't have this suit. I'm just not That's as fair. much of a dick Spider-Man. So it's like, I, but I mean, I don't know. I think like now that I'm thinking about it, like, Topher Grace does actually like playing the evil part. He like he did like play it like the teeth. I don't know like everything like just he. I don't know like just I forgot what line like um he says something real creepy to MJ. I don't know. He's, oh yeah, he, he, he's he's he, got he, her. He's like my spidey he's sense like, is tingling. If you oh, know, oh yeah, I mean. that's right. Yeah, yeah, and just oh man, just an absolute menace though. Um, I mean, he played that role well. Like he he did. Go crazy at the end there, um, but no, I uh, I can't believe. I guess I guess Mike gave him the character, but I I, I gave the performance to the to the man, uh, Toby Maguire. I don't know. That was just I uh, I love I loved him in the movie and just him going going full dark. You know, goth mode is hilarious. But like I think like actually like the scenes with him and Aunt May are some of like the best actually just acted scenes in the entire movie. Like there's. They just have these two sit down conversations. One is whenever she gives the ring to him for the first time, and then the second one is whenever Toby gives the ring back to her and being like, "No, I messed up. I fucked up." And like those two scenes were actually like, I don't know, just two, like two people sitting down, starting to tear, you know, teary eye with each other. Like it's it's like a really powerful moment. Like I, I thought it was just like he did well on that end. I think he, well, you he can't, you this. forget where they were in the like the. FBI or if, I don't know Marshall whatever this guy's role's office were and like he was telling them like hey this yeah. guy that we thought was a killer we were wrong yeah this is actually it and he's out now and then that was another scene where they were both in there and emotional and it was like mm-hmm. real heart to heart like oh mm-hmm. shit so I was just yeah. back up on those another scene to add to that that's true yeah I forgot about that one yeah he, he was yelling at it was Gwen Stacy's dad. I think he, he's yeah, like, yeah, Captain, Captain? Stacy, yeah, Captain, yeah, yelling at him, being like, "No, I'm not gonna fucking calm down. You're telling me my dad's killer or my uncle's killer still out there, you know? And he's at large. Like, what the? F- and you've had this information for two years or whatever. Like, yeah, he was he was getting pissed. And then like Aunt May to be the one that's like, or it, I guess that's after. Oh, I forgot about that too. Yeah, he like Spidey comes back and he tells her. Like, hey, that Sandman guy, like, he died last night. Spider-Man killed him, you know? And, like, he was expecting Aunt May to be like, oh, my God, finally. Like, that guy got what he deserved. And Aunt May was like, oh, well, that's kind of actually shitty. And he's like, why? What the fuck? Like, I thought you'd be happy. (laughs) I love Um, the way she goes, Spider-Man? Yeah. You know, like, Spider-Man doesn't kill people. You know, it's just a a wonderful little moment that I think, um, you know, it it, it it shows just how different Peter is now. Because he's like for one, thought he murdered a guy and was very, very happy about it. You know, like Spider-Man 1, 
at least it was like an accident, you know, like he didn't really murder the guy. He was like, I made a move and he tripped and fell. I told you that, you know, like, you don't, yeah. you don't put, the, don't throw that back in my face, you know? And, uh, mm-hmm. this one, he went straight from that conversation with MJ about how he didn't do it to going ahead and going and killing the motherfucker yeah. we thinks did now, you know? And, uh, to be honest though, if that dude didn't trip in the first one, I think he's still finishing the job. Mm. You know, that night, anyways, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like he still goes there. I think it's just kind of, he got luckier that he yeah. had like put it off his conscience a little bit more. Cause he's like, well, that dude just fucking tripped over a pipe and fell out it, of a window. It was like, if look, if I'm going out, I'd rather say that Spider-Man off me rather than saying that I tripped and like hit my head on the ground. You know, yeah. I'd rather dude, my Spider- dude literally tripped over a pipe and Blue fell out of a window death. and yeah. just yeah, died. Yeah, I think, I mean, already, you know, can't really argue against that one. No, yeah, that's fair. Now, but someone we haven't been given, uh, we haven't talked about at all, who I think is actually really, really fucking good in this movie as an actor and as a character is Thomas Hayden Church as Flint Marco, uh, Hmm. the Sandman. Um, Just uh, one of those villains that whenever... I think it's funny the kind of exposition dump they have at the end that gives Peter his solace. Like, I'm just really happy with, like, Sam Raimi's filmmaking ability to make these moments of exposition because to introduce this guy in this movie and be like, oh, actually, about Uncle Ben's death, you don't know the whole story. Like, it required a bunch of exposition and Raimi's prowess as a filmmaker to shoot those scenes in black and white and make them... Really like, uh, they felt like old timey because now this, the first Spider-Man movie is like five years old anyway. So it's like you're revisiting a time past and everything. And, uh, oh, it just, sick. it just feels right, yeah. you know? And, uh, the double, you know, you get the first one where Peter's in Peter's head and it's mm-hmm. him actually like doing it like defenseless Uncle Ben on the ground. And he still even pulls the trigger, you know, like that's what he thought happened. And I think like, the, I happened. think the explanation of what actually happened is a little funny. Um, yeah, yeah. He just had has the gun there, and he just oh, gets. Oh, I oh. I looked away, and I happened to pull the trigger. Um, oh, oh, got a little scared there. Accidentally squeezed the trigger. I mean, I, I guess you know, like if your fingers right. I don't know. No, I mean, like, like not, this yeah. would happen, but like I wish it would have been like a. This guy came up and was like, "You got to kill him." Uh, you got to shoot this guy. And he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And then like, he like maybe like forced, like pulls the trigger or something. Like, I don't know. Like just, mm-hmm. I thought it was a little, uh, anti-dramatic, I would say, but you have to relieve Thomas Hayden Church's Sandman completely of guilt. Like it's gotta be an accident or else mm-hmm. it's like, you know, because he's like, well, I, you know, my, my daughter was sick and she, I needed the money and we needed the car and, I looked away, I pulled the trigger, it was an accident, man, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. to, to follow that moment with Peter's, like, I forgive you. Like, it's a genuine, very, very fulfilling moment that I, I love in this movie. It was, uh, I think this, like I said, I think this movie has a wonderful ending, which is yeah. rare for the comic book movies we discuss. It's usually like, well, the first two acts were really good, but that third act, wow, that fell off. This is like, the first act's really good, the middle act's iffy and then the last act is actually really good and that's that's a new format you know i don't think we've dealt with that yet mm-hmm. um yeah, but it, it's it, uh it ultimately i i enjoy the movie like a lot of the main storylines from the trilogy like it really did time up really well like a lot of i don't know things that's i don't know i didn't i didn't really think about that until now like how good of a bow tie it really is for the trilogy and like so i'm thinking of it's hard to do like Tom Holland's like he just has so much more going on in his like Spider-Man run. But like looking at just his movies, like um I don't know, they're saying that's just the origin of Spider-Man. We're getting a whole another trilogy with them or something. Who who knows how that's So how did how did this but, trilogy end with Peter and MJ? I kind of I don't know if I blanked or if I just didn't catch it at the end. How did that end with those two that's the yeah. only thing they're kind of leaving open-ended a little bit and i think yep. it's kind of uh i think it's purposeful in the way that their relationship has gone so far you know it's kind of like it, it's it's almost saying like no matter you know she's saying 
she's singing that song. It's like, I'm never going to love again. I'm never going to let anybody back into my heart. This shit hurts like hell. Every time I do, this guy died. This guy's the one who, uh, he died for. And like, I, I love both of them. I love both of them. And so, uh, it's just, she, she's, she's in a weird place. But I think that what the ending ultimately shows us is that like, there's no one else for either of them. And either they'll be alone or they will be together. And I think that both are kind of like, a. I think they're both acceptable uh, scenarios, you know. I think that I y- y- they kind of leave it for you to go. That's their reunion. I think that's how I'm gonna go about it. Is that this ultimately works out for them, um, and that's kind of that's just kind of it, you know. Um, and I guess in No Way Home we get confirmation that it worked out, but uh, you know, no, filmmaking does he wise, say that in No Way Home he says like, do they say they? They say something about how it was complicated for a long time, but like it ultimately worked out, I think. Mm. Um, okay. That's, I don't know, that is crazy to think about. Yeah, this is 2000, what? 2007. Yeah, 2007. He doesn't pop back up until 20, 20, 21. 21, man. That's, I don't know. That moment was pretty legendary. Like, I don't know. I, I kind of downplay it every now and then. And, like, I remind myself of how, like, how insane that was to actually be in the theater and watch that. Mm. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it is It is canon that they, they worked it out. That's good. That's always been my head canon, at least. Yeah. So. No, it's just, uh, yeah. I, I think that the movie does a good job of leaving that, like, uh, because it doesn't leave you with a fulfilled feeling and like they, they embraced and they kissed, which would have been the like, they're back, you know, like that was, I'd be willing to bet that was Raimi kind of going like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tie everything up with a perfect little bow. I do want to do something, you know, like, uh, and I think that, uh, he, he left it for the audience to kind of like, it's one of the more artful moments in most any comic book movie. Like you don't get a lot of that in comic book movies where it's like, what does the ending mean? Uh, like what, what, what yeah. actually happened there? Where are we going with that? Um, and I appreciate that we did. It creates discussion. And it, I think that, you know, we all want them to be together. We all want that to work out. But I think that something the movie's trying to say is that if it doesn't, you know, why, you know, like it's yeah. this cycle will just keep on going and either they will eventually figure out how to work through it or it will ultimately tear them apart. Um, I like it. I like ending. I think so. But uh, I just want to see him with a few kids, you know, a few kids and a dog. I just want to see like post, post life, them happy. Mm. Look, looking over at a sunset, you know. Yeah. Well, I would like to have his that. little maker, um, his little daughter, um, who becomes a little spy too. Mm-hmm. New Avenger yeah, like, could be a new Avenger. Come on out. Would they get like the actual real DNA shooters? You know, like if if he has a kid, mm. you know, and I don't know. Or, I, I love I love that it, difference. That he's he's the only live action Spidey that actually the webs come from within him. And like I don't know. That's it is. I mean, that's how I've always like. I guess is is it originally that he had web shooters and he had to make web shooters, or did it come yeah. just from his? Original, he had web shooters first. Yeah, this was the, this was the like. I don't think this was the first time they were ever organic with Tobey Maguire, but it popular it popularized it to the point where people forgot that he had web shooters. You know, like yeah. uh, I don't know. I feel like it just makes more like in my head. I mean, that's just what I grew up with, and that's just what I thought was the base. Spider Man, you know, he gets bitten by a one hundred percent a radioactive spider, you know. Well, and it adds I think it puts it over the top, you know, it makes it like, oh well then he's definitely Spider Man. Because I yeah. mean, the strength and the stickiness, it's not inherently spider like, you know, like you throw the webs on top of it and then it's like that's spider, you know, like that's a spider theme that you can run with. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I've always appreciated the organic web shooters, and I like the way that they did that with Venom uh, in this movie. Yeah, because that was... that's not typically like 
I don't think that's an inherent Venom characteristic. Maybe it's something it, like, the symbiote learns from Spider Man. Yeah, it was kind of like Tony's suit evolving over time, but like it's it, it like it felt that you know, and it was like oh, new ability unlocked. That, nice. Like I don't know. I I feel like. I fe- felt like that's kind of what it was because it, it was still like kind of broken webs, you know. It was like mm-hmm. it was still its its symbiote goo thing or whatever. It's not web. Yeah, it's just part it's like, of the symbiote. Yeah, it's like ooh, I just know what that feels like. I want to replicate that. But, well, and you can't fly or anything, you know. It's like uh, how do I how do I go about doing this in a way that's like that'll get me around faster? Spider Man can swing on webs. Oh, that's dope. I, mean, I like that. Let's do that. Up on the planet. I mean, he got you know meteor. At the very beginning, you know, while MJ and and Peter are making out, so he doesn't actually, you know, they see the shooting star, but then they make out at the worst time to not see the fucking asteroid yeah. that come or that lands twenty feet away from him. Um, I guess this is that's like that's the only way Venom knows how to get around Earth right now is swinging around buildings. That's like that's his base mode of transportation of getting around. If he's not going to do that little thing where he like. Does the weird crawly roll thing? He's gonna, he's gonna try and swing around. I don't know. The horror with Venom was nice. Like in like mm. whenever it was like in just its own form, you know, trapped in the middle of the metal tubes Ooh. and like getting super big, and then like you know he just dong makes makes it like you know and then blows him up. I've always know, loved was... that conclusion to the fight too. Like the uh, the sound. Oh. With the the, yeah. the beams being lodged into the ground and him just like running around and smacking the shit out of him, that's that, always been dope to me. Sick. Like the just circling around, you see him like just grabbing the pipes with webs, and then like while mm. flipping in midair, hitting him with the pipes, slamming him in the ground. Doing this it movie again, also like, had over far over. and away the best visual effects of any of the Spider Man yeah. movies as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any of Raimi's Spider Man movies, I should say. Um, like a lot of it was seamless. The only stuff where it was like, ah, well, you're getting iffy there is like Harry and the way he like moves on the, the glider and whenever him and Peter are fighting, whenever Peter's in like plain clothes and stuff. And you're kind of like, ah, well, that's a dude that's not actually there. You know, that's a computer generated image. Yeah. Um, and then it's whenever amazing. him and Venom are like falling through the air and fighting at the end, uh, uh yeah. it was still super cool and I loved it, but like you could tell, it like, yeah, it's, it's not real. Yeah, I don't know. Some was yeah, it just uh wasn't quite all there. And like I also thought those like little the like very first fight scene between Harry and Spider, he was shooting like those little web balls and they were just like floating by. I was like, ah, yeah. I feel a little bit better, but you know. Yeah. I can't do any better, so I can't complain too much. No, I feel you, yeah, yeah, exactly. All the sand was actually handled pretty well. Like his like transformation, like when he's like first just a, like the literal sandman, I guess it looks a little bit off, but like how are you really going to make a dude real realistic with, I guess they did it in No Way Home and it looked really fucking good. Um, now I'm like thinking, yeah, thinking about like, the new versions. All so. that at the end of that scene, at the end of the movie, think about all that sand that you had to clean up in that city. That's you true. You sand for years anywhere. Yeah. And, and like, do you think like when he's flying around? Like it just sees like just sprinkling everywhere. Like like he doesn't get all of it with him the whole oh. time. Like some of it does. Some of it's he's losing some of it. Oh. Not a bunch because he's a giant blob. Yeah, it dude, it flies. They're saying that like closely is a beach right now. What's like his critical mass? Like, what well, is it? Just like the weight that he was as a human, he needs that much sand just to live, you know? Or like, can he? You know, like, does he need that much at all times? At least how much, like, he weighed as a man? And when, you know? Green, when Harry came at him with flames, why didn't he turn into glass? You know, like, why did the sand not... That, why, that, that's you know? some hot-ass fire, dude. Right. That's, like, nuclear-level hot. Because, like, that's what happens, like, if you drop, like, a nuke on, like, on a desert. Like, it makes glass. Like, it will in, crystallize, in a certain, yeah. In a certain, you know, in the, the where the sun exists for a little bit. Um, like, so, I mean, yeah, Harry's got some fucking crazy tech on that hoverboard. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a little, a little, a little crazy. Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting that they were only acting on the water and sand turns to 
mud and not the well if you shatter him like glass thing uh maybe maybe they really could not make that look good like maybe yeah, that's all that did, is they did like a fake out like harry kind of flew behind a water tower and you thought that he was gonna like yeah. put the two together to like knock the whole water tower over and then he like just flies back and like yeah. just joins the fight and it's like nothing and i was like oh okay so i guess the water thing was just spider-man thought he killed him he like he was was just a moment that he wanted to flood him out you know i or I guess, and then, like I thought it would come back around a little bit, but I hate know. sand. Like, yeah, they could have got like the fire department. In. Like, I was, I was trying to think of like there was no real like New York moment like that, like where they got involved or like where they kind of like helped. You know, <laughs> they were, like they were on like the sidelines just watching. Yeah, but like I, I felt like if the fire department could have like just hosed them down to like turn them into mud or like I don't know, like something. Ooh, that'd um, have been cool. Or they needed, you know, yeah, like, like um, the way that I was thinking about it is that like Green Goblin and uh, Doc Ock were like scary, mm-hmm. but like everyone knew they were just dudes. You know, this is the first time they're dealing with like a sand monster oh, and sure. some fucking yeah. horror movie alien motherfucker. You know, so they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe we back off this one. Where's Spider Man? Can he come through real quick? Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, this this was kind of crazy. I will just tell like, you one thing that I just could not watch with a straight face was the news reporter as Spider Man is getting his shit kicked in, uh, and she's like, "It's it's kind of hard to describe what we're the seeing." Most foreign news reporter as well for Brooklyn or wherever yeah. they are in Manhattan. You know, it shows like a, I don't know some the, French the city or what, something. Geez. I don't know. Yeah, like Australian, maybe. I don't. I, I kind of forgot what accent it was. No, I, thought, I mean, yeah, like, because it's kind of vague. It kind of sounds like she's trying not to do an accent at some points, and then sometimes she's like, it, and she can't hold it back. And I don't want to hate on this actress. I think this is just a straight up casting department fault. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. how are you not going to take the opportunity here to get a New Yorker to be the reporter for this situation? That just makes sense in my head. Like, I don't know. Just kind of uh, thematically, I was like, ah, that fell a little flat. But like, it's Spidey it's, it's does not get a... his shit rocked though, and that's like, oh, he was. It like it sucks to see that, you know. Like I don't know, but I feel like it's kind of necessary to like see your hero like down at their their worst and still like still doing everything. Yeah, the vulnerability, they can, you know. It's like yeah, it's like um, I don't know, and, and like in every movie, he really gets the shit beat out of him. I mean, I like, love a battle damaged Spider Man suit. Looks yeah. good. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, his suits are so nice. I don't know. It's something about the, like I, I go back and forth between like the Amazing Spider-Man two suit and then Toby's suit. I go back and forth on which one's my favorite. Um, I don't know. There's something about just the three D like webbing on Toby. Yeah, the suit. raised webbing. I don't know. It's just it just does something for me. I don't know what it is. And then the black version of it too. Here is just. Oh. You get two, you know, you get two suits in one movie. Like, oh, fuck. They were originally going to make it a little bit more honorable to the comics, the uh, the symbiote suit, because it's originally just, it's like a smooth black with no webbing or anything, just the logo in the middle. Yeah, and, and they made it. it. They made it and they put it on Toby, uh, and they were like, "This looks like a gimp suit." Uh, it 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 it, it yeah, looks like a, a like a sex sex weird. thing uh, going on there. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be really weird. Dude, dude yeah. was horny whenever he had that suit on, so like, you it know, makes it was, sense. He was playing yeah. his cards. So I love sense. Elizabeth Banks here. We got Bryce Dallas Howard, a fantastically talented director of a couple things. Then you got Betty Brant, who's portrayed by Elizabeth Banks, who just directed Cocaine Bear and like and a few other movies. And it's like, what are, what are, what's what's the deal here? I love I love all the the powerful director ladies in this movie, but the the Betty Brant being like Peter Parker and yeah. Like the, the like, uh, and then she goes, Peter and J Jonah Jameson walks in and goes, Parker. And just like that little thing was very, very funny. I loved all that. Um, and I also love, again, the way they portrayed the dichotomy between Eddie and Peter Parker is that whenever Peter was hitting on Betty, she was into it. And whenever Eddie was, uh, hitting on Betty, 
she was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You know, leave yeah. me alone, guy. Told uh, her dad, told her dad that they were dating. And then like, and then we hear after that he was like, man, didn't we have like the best night or like whatever? And then she was like, we got coffee. We got coffee. Like, dude, we got, co- yeah, like that, that's, that's all that's happened is they just got coffee one time, which is hilarious. Um, I don't know. Yeah. That, Eddie Brock. I don't know. Kind of a, a sleeper. Now that I'm, I don't know. Now I've, oh, I've never movie. loved him in this movie. And this time around, like, I still, I mean, like, I don't love him in this movie, but like, I think this movie is a little weak on the character side of things. I think they do a good job of exploring the consequences of the trilogy as a whole. And of, uh, I think Harry, like, I think you got it on the head there with Harry kind of being the, you know, the kind of heart of this movie as far as what mm-hmm. drives the plot forward and has interesting character development but between peter and mj the other two main characters you're kind of just continually continuing to deal with shit they've already dealt with you know mm-hmm. that's kind of all we're seeing yeah. there um yeah. yeah it's just symbiote with pete mj and like yeah just same relationship stuff but harry that was like that's what threw some curveballs in uh in the the grand old story, I don't know. I never. Oh, it was definitely it was yeah. definitely his best movie. I would argue James Franco. Just uh, sorry, my connection's fucking up on me at the moment. I think you know, no, not there. I'm good. I'm good. Mm. Coming mm. through. All right. Uh, but uh, I, I've never thought James Franco is particularly good at acting, um, or particularly good in uh. Or particularly good in any movie, for that matter. Um, that's all. That's all it really adds yeah. up to. And he's ultimately, like level, he was he decent reach. in this one. Not high, yeah, but no, he, I, I don't know. I, I think he did. He did pretty well. And like a moment I forgot to bring up with him was with his uh, like the butler, and he's like the butler. Like, the butler's like, I've seen some shit in this house. Oh my fuck! You know, I, I've never and talked for about some it. reason. Yeah. Over the last couple years, I've I never just, saw fit to tell you this. Yeah, I had to. I had to give you, you know, your little villain arc. You had to be interesting, go on your own way. Now that you're, you're an experienced man, and you're the new goblin, and yeah, now I will tell you. Uh, as you, I also love that this guy shit. just like. This random fucking guy who works for Harry, like, absolutely knows Peter as Spider-Man, too, which is just another funny mm-hmm. fucking thing. That he just, like, watched that interaction from afar and was like, okay, wow, man, that's, kept, I've known him yeah, for a very long time. That's Peter Parker. Oh, shit. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, he, I guess, yeah, he's, he's, was that before or after the fight they had where Peter threw the bomb back at him? That was after. Was that, after? that was after. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like. He was probably, I don't know, I, yeah, he waited quite a while to tell him, but he told him at, a, I guess, a good moment. Um, you know, better late than never. Um, no, yeah. I, 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 I came out of this movie, what's crazy is I like the Spider-Man movie so much where I think this, as of now, is probably still my least favorite Spider-Man movie. And I actually exited... <laughs> Very, very happy. No, that's, that speaks more to the volume of the quality and how much I enjoy the Spider-Man movies because I came out of this pleasant, like pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and I, it, it'll be interesting to rate. That's all I know. Like, uh, I'm I'm excited to get to that portion of the of the pod. But uh, what are, are there any favorites yet that Michael has not divulged? We have not I, done the favorite line. Oh yeah, and well. I think scene is just like the classic obvious, you know, it's dark Peter dancing. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. The classic the Riz like, run. It's yeah. too good. You know, you have like there's like a kid, there's a video of a kid in a classroom dancing too, like he's up on the table and he's doing the exact same thing. Like that's just that's just a classic scene and that's what I think of when I think of this movie is that dancing scene. Mm-hmm. So I knew that before coming in the rewatch that that was gonna be my favorite scene just because that's classic. yeah yeah oh, it's classic. classic. Oh, um, yeah. But going on to my favorite line is a huge curveball, and I don't think anyone would ever guess this. Like you take the entire script and go through all the lines, and you would never just be like the top, be like the bottom ten lines that you would think that I would use. <laughs> but I just had like it just caught me off guard. I had to like take a second, like look at it. I was like, what? 
oh my god, it was so funny. So background, so I'm like around like the middle of the movie, um, Spider Man, he's wearing his black costume, and uh, Eddie had like taken that or had photoshopped that picture, made him look bad in the newspaper. So like mm-hmm. all the citizens and bystanders were like on the sidewalk and are like, oh my god, like Spider Man's evil, like this is so crazy. And there was this one guy that says, I have a nine year daughter at home, like. Who is she supposed to look up to now? And I was just like, you're the father. <laughs> like, maybe she looks up to you, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, maybe you should be there for her. I don't, like, I don't know. That's fucking funny. Spider-Man's it. Spider-Man is God at this point. You know, it's like, yeah, if he's God, what else do we have? Nothing <laughs> for our children to even look up to anymore. This, yeah. this shit world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> A nine-year-old I also love that it just like, Took one fucking foe of him yeah. in a black suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And it, was, it was a question like, "Oh, he's evil, obviously." F- Not a doubt. Uh, spiders, Spider Man's wearing a black suit. I am afraid <laughs> to walk home from work. I can't, literally, yeah. I said I was safe a couple days ago, but now I can't even walk home from work. This dude had changed his suit color, and I I can't believe it. Yeah, and, uh, like how did? Oh, I guess the the bugle had to. Had to put it out that the, it was all all wrong. Um, that's right. I was like, how, how did it? I've had a retraction in twenty years. Yeah, I don't know. At least, at least, uh, you know, because Jonah Jameson consistently, he's a mm-hmm. fuckboy. He consistently shows that he has a moral compass at some point. Yeah. He's just yeah. he, he's just inflammatory as all hell. Uh, like he wants so bad. That for Spidey to be a menace and mm-hmm. and you know, hey, get the real dirt and let everyone know. And even when he I thought he had, to God, it, this is what story. journalism was still like. Yeah, there's a yeah. I, I, and this is <laughs> there's the a dude worm. going on Fox News in an interview in a one on one with Tucker Carlson where he is the only source. Nobody else is nobody else is uh, backing this up. Nobody's saying that this is right. Uh, that he is telling the truth. It's just this random fucking guy who's going to talk to Tucker Carlson on TV about having had sex with Barack Obama when he was on crack. That's happening on Tucker Carlson. That's happening on Fox News. Nobody backed this up. Nobody looked into this more. You know, like, it's just, uh, it's just, let's that's interview this thing guy. that's going on right now. <laughs> the real thing. I saw that. I thought it was just like some BS or like little like click this link, like clickbait type shit, you know? That's actually happening. What? Uh, <laughs> now you would have to go to like back then you would have had to have like gone and met the people this person knows. Even a quick Google search. This guy has a 27 year long record uh, uh, of of crime like. I, I mean, yeah. and it, it's, it's all about related being right to fraud, man. which is yeah. inherently lying. So, like, what the fuck are we doing here, man? Like, it, at least J. Jonah Jameson back in the day was like, this is a fake photo. You're fucking fired. You know, like, uh, it's not about being right anymore. It's about being first. You got to get those clicks. Worthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to gotta have, you got to be able to yeah, be clicked on and be first before anyone gotta else. got to generate conversation but, any way you can. Yeah, we live in a weird world. You know, it's, it's yeah. I, I wish it was like, like, I wish I could hop into the, the Sammy verse and, uh, yeah. chill out with, with Peter, this Peter or work for what the saying, Mike? You guys think, uh, this guy had sex with Barack or things like <laughs> Hey, wow. I got no beef with the accusation that he might've had sex with a dude. That's not the part that I'm, it's the fact that Tucker Carl is like equating it with having smoked crack like that's what he's putting side by side he's that's like uh weird. i Man, bro first crack, and black that's where i'm like maybe he shouldn't maybe maybe he shouldn't be a, a, a authority figure if you smoke crack maybe you shouldn't be up there if you fuck dudes i care you know like yeah. that's cool i don't think fuck those are mutually understand. exclusive things i don't think In if fact, you fuck I hope dudes you, fuck you specifically smoke <laughs> crack as well you know, I don't think every gay person on the planet is smoking crack. You know, no. I, I don't think that comes with it um, at all. What a wow! I had no idea this was going on at all. This is the first time yep. hearing of it, which is insane. It's like it's all happened today, and this is we're recording uh, last Wednesday for those who are listening on Friday. Um, uh, we're recording a couple Wednesdays um, ago, so that's probably already 
at its new cycle moment. And I'm sorry that yeah. I'm bringing it up again, but, uh, wow. Yeah, man. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very funny. It's a very funny time. Funny time to be alive. Um, but, uh, yeah, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't have many other thoughts on the movie. I think we've kind of uh, we've kind of exhausted the exhausted the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if y'all are ready for a rating, I'm ready for a rating. I think I am. And the only other thing, uh, maybe J. Jonah Jameson can get a little less intense buzzer on his desk, um, especially <laughs> especially if he's trying to lower lower his heart rate, yeah, or uh, his blood sugar or whatever. I like I to think, think of I, that as Betty Brandt having taken a stand and being like, you will listen to me, you know, yeah. because he's like cut her off and multiple That's times true. in the other okay. movies. Yeah. She's like, I'm um, fucking done. You're going to hear me when I'm talking to you. Yeah. Other one. Okay. I like well, that. Like, you know that he specifically like, Hey, even if I try to reject this or be mad about this, you don't give up. You force me and put me into my place. Like, you mm-hmm. know, he went along those lines, so she is just. Oh old. yeah, because he he would fire her if he didn't agree to this in some capacity. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's like, he, he's like, okay, okay. He even like, he's even trying. You know, he he's like, mm. he pushes the buzzer. Thank you. You know, yeah, very yeah. very like gently. It's 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 so funny ah, to see Jay Jonah Jameson take your pill. like that. You know, take your pill. He you reaches for the first bottle. No, not that one. Second. No, not that one. And he's like, huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This one? Oh, okay. And it's like, I don't know. I don't I thought it was yeah, and he's calming down. Alright. Thank you. He's he's work you know, he's a work in progress. Uh J. Yeah. Jameson. At he's least just, he's, he's just he's only he's a trying. man. Yeah. But he kept his, his journalistic integrity, you know. The second he, he found does. out it was fake. So you get the to fuck a degree, out of here, you know, the fired. yellow journalism, the inflammatory nature of the things he does in direction of Spider Man. That's not journalistic integrity, you know, like you are. Yeah. Every man's got his beef, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and <laughs> he's just got his beef with Spider-Man. Uh, yep. That's it. But uh, let's go ahead and rate this bad boy then. Uh, let's start with Mike, of course, as we usually do. Um, what uh, On a scale of one to ten, how much are you enjoying this movie? It sounds like you enjoyed it quite a bit, so I'm excited. Yeah, I guess one nine point five overall. Ooh. Just... Ooh. High up there. Okay. I really like start to ending, and it's been a while. Like I said, since it's been a while since I rewatched this movie, so some of this was kind of like a refresher. Like the first half was like it was good. Like you guys have stated before, it was a good movie. Like the visuals were good, everything was good about it. I was like, wait, I know there's like like the dark version. Like when is that coming up? So the anticip- anticipation for that that was what kind of got me there. Two. Harry, I forgot that's how this movie ended was with, you know, him yeah. going out. I was like, I was like, I've kind of totally forgot how this movie ended. And then for that to happen, it kind of felt like that was the first time I re- like I've watched that again. So that was like, you know, like having that OG feeling of like, holy shit, that just happened. That was awesome. And then, yeah, just going back to again, Topher Grace being in this movie and playing that part. Love that 70s show. So I just enjoyed all around. Good movie. Great movie. Dude, I love that. I love that for you. You know, I'm a, I'm not, I'm not a nine five, and I'm nowhere near a nine five. Um, however, I respect that dearly. Um, because especially with this ending, man, like this ending, the last fifteen minutes, I'm, I'm feeling everything I'm supposed to be feeling. Like I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. Like that chunk of the movie is mm-hmm. fucking good. You know, the end of this movie is so, so solid and enjoyable as all hell to watch. Um, I mean, and again, that ending, whenever they're kneeling over Harry's body and like the, the imagery there and kind of smoke between the people we started this story with and like it, it, it does feel done, you know, and that's something that I'd forgotten this this story kind of brings us and uh i did enjoy that joe where, where where's your gut taking you after this watch well we gave number one that's our highest enjoyment out of the list that's a 975 number two we gave an 825 um on enjoyment and i, don't know, I mean i think i could i could say i'm almost to spider-man 2 levels of enjoyment um I don't know. It, it, this one is undoubtedly more fun, I think. But I think the enjoyment for two is more of like this is just a really good story, and 
I love Doc Ock as a villain. I thought I'm like crushing it. So it's more of like how well the movie's made as well that like the enjoyment's coming out here for. But this one is just kind of in raw form more fun. Like more fun to watch. Hmm. Like has like the You put the, it all down on paper and you go, This is the funnest movie in this trilogy. And it there's no doubt that it is, you know. I think that's I think that's fair to say one hundred percent. Um and I, I was surprised. I thought we were co- I, coming into this. I thought I was looking at a six or seven, and I'm at more like a seven, seven, five, eight. eight. Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. Like eight is X Men, Ghost Rider, and Batman Returns. Like that's like, I think I don't know. I think it is up there. Like this, this is really I don't know, really fun to watch, and like has a mm-hmm. lot of a lot of really cool moments. I think I. I, I don't know if I could tie it with Spider Man Two though. That was the only thing. Is like I, I, I couldn't. Don't, I, don't I think, couldn't. I uh, but I do. I do think like an eight is. I I thought there no fucking shot of that. So I'm I'm very happy with that. Um, mm-hmm. but what about uh, the genre rating? It's sort of this uh action adventure sort of story. It does a pretty good job. You going full ten with it? Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! Keep that coming. I just thought they nailed it with the action, the fights. They had multiple good and bad guys. Like they had all the characters. They still went, while obtaining the OG characters as like Mary Jane and Harry and Aunt May, and they even brought back like flashbacks of Uncle Ben. And they introduced new two people, and then they still and then Harry turned back to a good guy. I thought they just like nailed the 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 action part of it at least, like this the superhero action part of the nail so no oh, yeah i'm I'm with you they do a very very good job in this movie i, I think that the uh the genre rating it's going to be one of its stronger ones you know i think it, it found its tone and it stuck with it which is very very important in this rating i think i don't think like uh something that happens with some of these movies is we'll cut to a different sort of storyline within the movie and i'll feel like i'm watching a completely different movie you know that doesn't that doesn't happen a whole lot within this one. It's uh it, it's very very consistent. Um, that's important. You know, I'm, what what have we given the last two? One is a ten. Uh, two is a nine five. Um, so I mean, yeah, I I don't know how I could look you in the eye and tell you that worse than two in that regard. Yeah, like eight or Blade and Batman, eight two five Batman Returns. Like we gave V for Vendetta a nine. Um, All right, I hate to I hate to cut this off. I really have to go to the bathroom. I've been needing to go for like the past fifteen. I gotta go. So y'all can talk. Piss, girl. I'll give like two minutes. Be right back. And I'll just join yeah. in. Y'all keep talking. Yeah, yeah. No, I but. Think- uh I think I might be up, like, eight. Like, it's either on that V for Vendetta level, like, at a nine. I think it's still below, like, two. Uh, so it's below nine, five. But... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm not even I'm not even that taken with it, uh, action-wise. I think an eight, five is, is where my gut was kind of taken. Uh, I think this does have some of the most electric uh, fight sequences of the trilogy, but... Um, there, there's just a, there's something missing, you know, the quality of the movie just isn't to the level that one and two were, and that ultimately affects the genre rating as well. Um, it's a fun action adventure movie, but it, I wouldn't say it's a good action adventure movie, you know? It needed that, that level of the city joining in. I don't know. It, it just needed one of those and. The city could have joined in at the end. It made me feel a little better. And if, yeah, the second act was a little, a little better, more. I don't know. Just seeing. I said we go ahead and yeah. do adaptation as well while he's pissing. Um, yeah, I think eight five is what we're for, for genre though. I think so. Yeah. So? Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. confident in that. Um, okay. it's a it's a solid action adventure movie. It's more fun than anything else, though. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Adaptation. I guess like Venom is a little weird <clears throat> with how they handle the whole symbiote mm-hmm. situation. But I think like for the movie, 
it works okay. It leaves like a li- like some plot holes, like he just doesn't have the suit on. Is he still, you know, like affected by it at all or not? Or is it only when he does wear the suit? And, I don't know, that's not really fully answered, I guess. Um, but I think every other character is pretty sweet. You got a got the hobgoblin uh, mask, a little bit little. Mm. I think that's the chromed out one, right? From the con- I think yeah. Um, I think I remember. I don't know. Haven't read many many stories with the Hobgoblin, but I thought he had like a chrome mask, um, which was pretty sick. I thought Harry was was pretty cool as like the new Goblin, just like taking up the mantle. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Really quick with like his transformation though, like he just steps out of the chamber and like he doesn't like I don't know. Like we saw Willem Dafoe jump out of the glass chamber like a freaking animal and then just kill that scientist that was there with him but like harry's just like mm. yeah i'm the shit, I'm the shit now like i'm 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 all good and like i don't know it was like right was that the first time he did that or like has he been pumping the juice for like a while i think he's you know i think it's like he's done that and it's kind of like a situation where he re-ups sort of you know wow. uh and he's pumped I, it felt like that wasn't the first time i mean that i don't know it felt like he's he was just kind of doing it a lot. I don't know. I guess that's when he did get strong, and like when he did go full super villain, kind of yeah. like with all the tech and stuff. But I don't know. Could have been a slow burn, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he figured. Maybe you know, Willem Dafoe. You know, there was still some kinks to be worked out. You know, with his formula and everything, and maybe maybe Harry figured it all out um, somehow. I don't know. Maybe he ironed out all the kinks. So maybe this was the first time. But I guess. Like Venom is a little weird, but I think like everything else is It's pretty strong. Pretty pretty strong. Yeah. Um, I like I, I, I think we're falling at around an eight there. again. Yeah. Yeah, that would Yeah, above above Batman begins in Batman eighty nine, but below Batman Forever. Um I feel good about I that. I think yeah. Yeah. I think I agree. The villains in the previous two are just so good. I don't know. It's just and like well adapted. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, it's, I don't know. It's too good. But I like an eight there. Okay. All right. Then, uh, Mike, critically, on a scale of one to ten, just how good is this movie for you? I thought, I gave this one a decent score as like my other ones. I gave this one an eight. I thought they kind of just hit all different aspects. They gave, comedy they gave sadness they gave like friendship they gave overcoming a bunch of things like they just like hit on a lot of different aspects which i feel like a lot of like superhero like marvel movies like don't necessarily hit on a lot they i think they just touched on a lot of the ground so i just thought overall like with the cast and everything too gave it eight i think it was pretty Mm -hmm. solid no i love that i love that i'm a I'm a bit beneath you here as well. Your your score ultimately comes to a 92, by the way. 9.2 out of 10, which is very strong. Uh, would rank rather highly in our uh, in our ratings as well. Um, Put it above Spider-Man yeah. 2. Fourth place um, out of all the movies we've covered so far. Yeah, that's only Superman, Spider-Man, and Mask of Phantasm would be above. Mm. Yeah, right above Spider-Man 2. Is where it would it would, it would push Spider Man two down. Um, but uh, what what have we given the last two critically? One was an eight five, and two was an eight. Um. So I'm beneath that by a decent margin for me. Um. I think that while the story works within the movie, I think it's carried heavily by performances and uh, Raimi's direction. I think that the way this movie was written, it, ha- it it wraps itself it wraps itself up really nicely, and it starts really good. But I think the middle chunk it kind of loses sight of not the goal, but it it's it's kind of middling for a while. Um, and I think that visually it loses its spark. Um, again, in the middle, there's, there's something really mm-hmm. distinct about the beginning and something really distinct about the end. But, um, besides the dark Peter sequence, I don't remember much of what happens in the middle of the movie. Um, it, it feels like it, it kind of loses sight, sight of itself. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, 
I'd say, I, like, I think it's in the sevens somewhere. It's going hmm. six. It seems too low. I feel like it's it's kind of in the sevens. Um, and that's the only sevens we have critically would be Batman Returns at a seven, and then Batman eighty nine at a seven five. Um. Okay. Um. I think I have similar uh similar issues with Batman Returns as I do this movie. Um I think that stylistically it's very very uh potent. I think it has it has a very very distinct uh visual language and style and that's very very important to me. Um mm-hmm. but the writing becomes a little lackluster and the middle chunk of the movie kind of loses its uh steam. Uh my my only gripe is that I don't think it's as good looking as Batman Returns. I think Batman Returns yeah, that's like it's it's primary. That's what boosts it is that the aesthetic of that movie is unreal. Um, I think that this uh, we got to give it respect for its visual effects and its performances and its direction. Uh, the visuals for about half the movie are really good and the writing for half the movie is, is pretty solid. Um, so I think a seven is, is fair. And for me personally, seven is its ceiling. Okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I kind of, cause then six, five is Batman forever. And then six, five again, Superman, the Donner cut. And, Six seems yeah way too low, like that's Superman two. I don't know. I th- I think it like it is. It's pretty well made. Like I think like either mm-hmm. six seven five or seven is what I. I'll, what I'll, I'll go cool seven. With. I'll grant. I'll I'll, okay. I'll go seven. I'm I'm cool with that. Okay. So that would average her out to a seven eight eight, which seventy nine, which puts it at ninth place. In Top ten base right now. Yep, it is. What is it? Seven, eight, eight. Yeah, it is above Batman eighty nine, Batman Returns, and X Men, but below X two, Batman Forever, V for Vendetta, Batman Begins, and then the Tippy. That feels right. I'm cool with that. So yeah, yeah. I How's know. it faring on like IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes? IMDb was like a six three, I believe. Um. If I if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pulling it up. Yeah, six three on IMDb, um, and then I feel like the tomato. I feel like the audience is either gonna hate it or love it. Let's see. Yeah, audience is fifty one percent. So this is just kind of either you love it or you hate it. And then a, a sixty three um, on the critical six side. Six three. The they love that six three. So, um. Hmm. No, no. I feel I feel pretty. So- I felt a lot better about this movie than I thought I would. I still have a lot of issues with its structure and stuff, but beyond that, it's it's relatively good, and I think it does a lot of interesting interesting character work, if not a lot of character work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, with that, methinks we conclude another episode of the comic book movie journey through film and stick a fork in the Spider Man <laughs> Raimi trilogy. Yeah. That shit is done. Uh, we will return to Toby Maguire as Spider Man eventually, far down the line. Thank you, Joseph George, for being here, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Michael Muehlberger, once again, my friend. Of course, this was really fun joining you guys. You know, my best boys from high school. I really enjoyed doing this with y'all. So, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. You are welcome back anytime. Okay. It happened there for a second. It happened there for a second. Um, uh, you are welcome back anytime, my friend. You let us know what the next superhero movies you're intrigued by are, and you're there. You're, you're seated, my friend. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got that. Oh, fuck yeah. But, uh, yeah, with that, remember, peace, love, and bloom. And I'm going to put some dirt in your eye.